ever struck out at love? <sighs> when I was 17 years old, my parents took my brother and I for a holiday vacation on a cruise ship to the Caribbean islands. I was dreaming of some epic love boat romance. Pretty soon, I meet 20-year-old Fritz from France. Ooh, I'm love-struck immediately. And oddly enough, he was too. He asks if I can go with him and his siblings parasailing offshore. I knew this was a date, so I ask permission from my parents. Can I go? And they said, if you take your brother Robbie with you, he'll keep you safe. So I got in my bikini, my sandals, my cover up. I am jumping out of my skin, and we walk off onto Fantasy Island. Well, I'm going parasailing. I have no idea what parasailing actually is, but honestly, it didn't matter. I would have done anything for this guy. So we're flying through the air. Sparks are flying between us. I am having the time of my life. Well, it turns to dusk. It's sunset. We have to go back to the ship. So finally, Fritz grabs my hand. and We run ahead of our siblings to get a little privacy. I have bellies full of butterflies. I'd been waiting for that all day. You see, I was a very inexperienced 17-year-old, so this meant everything. Well, he reaches toward me for a kiss. I lean in, and right at that very moment, a giant seagull flies low over my head and poops. I have bird poop flopping down my face and head. I was literally shat out of luck. And thus begins my ill-fated journey with romance. Strike one. Growing up, I learned to believe that my self-worth was dependent upon another choosing me, wanting me, loving me. Now, it wasn't so much that this is what my parents taught me. I thought maybe it was because I was born blind in my left eye. So the world reflected me as, you're deformed. There's something wrong with you. So maybe that set me up to look outside for that outer reflection even more for my acceptability. I became obsessed with finding my one true love that would make me whole, complete. Now, honestly, we all, or most of us, share the same story. You can all write in your own formula of why that made sense to you at some point. But we begin looking outside of ourselves to find someone else to love us. But whether we like it or not, we are programmed to believe that someone out there's adoration and devotion will make us more secure, confident, successful, happy. It's even scientifically been proven that we'll live longer from it. But what is not emphasized enough is in order to be secure, successful, confident, and happy, we need to learn how to truly, madly, and deeply love ourselves. And that means learning to listen to our inner guidance. And when you do that, that love is enough. When I was 22 years old, I met Shy, my perfect candidate for my husband-to-be. Same educational background, same religious background, and we were both studying to become psychotherapists in grad school. Well, we became fast friends, started dating, moved in together, got engaged. And all the while, I would have doubts. Is this the chemistry, the emotional connection that's going to last me for a lifetime? He had doubts too. We talk about it. But we were such a good match. It just all made so much sense. So even when we said, I'm having mad crazy crushes on other people, we still stayed focused. We had a lot of friends, family support, and they all would say, cold feet is normal before you get married. Or, oh yeah, you're in your 20s. Of course you're going to be attracted to tons of people. Don't worry about it. So we stayed the course. And a little before I turned 26, it was our wedding day. All of our friends and family, brides and bridesmaids, flew back to my hometown in Michigan where I grew up. Everyone was sitting inside the synagogue doors on altars waiting for me to come down the procession. I stood back in a giant hallway, big white 
gown behind me, flowing out, looking like the princess, waiting for her prince, happily ever after. The thing is, I did not feel that way. Inside, I felt down. I felt a little flat. I felt like I was looking down on myself. Something didn't feel right. This is not how I was supposed to feel on my wedding day. Right at that moment, I started to panic, took a breath, and I heard a voice. I look. There's no one around. And then I hear it again. It's coming from up above. And the voice says, don't worry. It's OK. You don't need to stay married if you're unhappy. You need to marry yourself. Oh, I just thought I heard God speak to me. I'm completely shocked. And right at that moment, the synagogue doors come open, and there's my dad with his arm and his cane waiting for me. I take his arm, and we slowly go down the processional. I look, and I catch my beloved's eyes. He's smiling, tears of joy and admiration. His heart is wide open. I feel it, and my heart breaks open. I feel relieved. I love this guy. We're great friends. It's totally going to be OK. We get married. We have an amazing wedding. About one year later, I felt horrible. But I had to tell him I wanted a divorce. Strike two. Now, I'd like to tell you that that was the first time I'd heard a voice, a body instinct, a sensation, an emotion that I didn't listen to, but it wasn't. Nor would it be the last. One year later, I'm 27. I'm standing in my apartment. And I hear a voice say, do not leave your apartment. You're in danger. I push it away. What? I, I just ignore it. There's too much going on. I hear it again. Do not leave your apartment. You're in danger. OK. I can't totally ignore that. I'm definitely hearing voices. And it's telling me I'm in danger. But I don't know what to do. Because right in this moment, my boyfriend Michael is standing there. And he's upset with me. We're in an argument. He's told me that I've been flirting with the man across the street through the apartment window, that he'd been looking at me in my nightgown. Well, I didn't even know there was a man that existed in the apartment across the street. Michael was my everything. He was now the one. He was the one I was supposed to spend my life with, the one that made me feel secure, confident, whole, amazing. I didn't know what to do. And Michael was demanding that I take him home that instant, or he was going to end the relationship. Right then, I hear a voice that says, do not leave the apartment. You are going to be raped and robbed. Oh, I've never heard such a dark voice. My body immediately starts shaking. I feel nauseous. I feel goosebumps coming up and down my spine. I feel dizzy. Something is terribly wrong. My body is telling me so. I am being warned about something, but I feel nuts. I don't know if he's nuts, I'm nuts, I do not know what's going on. And all I know is I want this relationship more than my life. So I drive him home. We pull in. We're in front of his apartment. Our eyes are locked. We, I'm begging him, come on, this is crazy. There's no other guy. What are you talking about? And right at that moment, two guns are at both of our heads. I become victim to multiple horrific violent crimes all night and all through the morning. I almost lost my life that night. That strike three almost took me completely out. I chose to think my safety was in another rather than knowing any warning to take care of myself was worth heeding. After that, I desperately needed to learn how to listen to my inner guidance, my intuition, my body sensations, my hunches. And I'd like to tell you that at age 27, I mastered that. Never again did I make a mistake. Mm -mm, not true. Because learning to honor and listen to our inner guidance is not an easy task. It takes place in pieces over time. And it strengthens with practice and understanding. You see. So many of us, when we get a hunch, a body sensation, a whisper, a nudge, a voice, a crazy voice, when we hear that, and if it's not something we want to believe, it's not something we want, it's not what we're attached to, 
or it's not where the people around us want us to believe, they don't want us to think something, we often learn to dismiss ourselves like, what are you talking about? You're making too much of that. That's silly. Why would you say that? You're crazy. You're hysterical. Are you stupid? What's wrong with you? Are you losing your mind? Are you delusional? Are you having a nervous breakdown? And it literally can go from that point all the way to that spectrum pretty easily. Because for most of us, we carry trauma, an unhealed trauma, an unhealed generational trauma, passes down and literally inherently teaches us not to understand how to listen to our inner guidance, our message, our knowing. And it is essential that we learn that. In fact, imagine lineages of people over time pushing down their desires, their needs, their instincts, their intuitions, because they need to survive the person in front of them, the culture in front of them, the dominating situation. It's actually passed on through biology, through epigenetics. We've learned we literally carry trauma markers. We are set up to not know how to listen to ourselves. We live in a culture that teaches us to listen outside for wisdom, for information. We're not often sitting in schools being taught to listen to our breath and our bodies and our hunches. I can't tell you how many times I've sat in my coaching practice where people are saying, I knew better. Why didn't I listen to myself? I had that hunch. I was warned, but I didn't listen. Well, we blame ourselves, and we don't want to admit that it happened half the time, and we push it down, and it goes down deeper. The good news, I've spent the past 31 years working as a counselor, a therapist, a coach, a movement teacher, an embodiment coach, developing tools and skill sets to help people tune back into their intuition, instincts, inner guidance, their bodies, all of it. And what I'd like to share with you is what I now like to call the love ball game, because no one wants to keep striking out at love when all we need to learn to do is listen in. So tonight, I'd like to ask you to take 15 minutes to get out your journal Pick one voice. It could be a little hunch, a nudge, a whisper that you're not paying attention to. It doesn't have to be anything big. Dialogue with it. And when you're done, I want you to stand up, and I want you to imagine what would it be like to already feel that you have answered that voice. Would you feel stronger, confident, scared, relieved? Just try that on and move it. Because just by that, things will change. And then I got thrown a curveball. I was walking through Lower Bidwell Park. And this is the place I walk every single day. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Not a lot of people around. I have my AirPods on. I'm talking to my cousin. And all of a sudden I hear a voice that says something, and it's not her. So I say, hold on. I look up, and I hear the voice say, look ahead of you. There's someone coming towards you. He's dangerous. Keep your attention on him. All right, what? Look up. About a quarter mile away, I see a man, totally nondiscreet, walking on a beautiful Sunday day just like me. Would have thought nothing of it. So I say, hey, I just heard a warning. There's a dangerous man coming. I didn't tell her I was hearing voices. <gasps> and... I said, here's my location in case the police need to be called. Well, he walks towards me. I'm watching him walk towards me, and he walks by. I turn. I watch him for another quarter mile. Nothing happens. I turn back around, and I hear the voice say, turn around right now. He's about to jump you. I gather all the strength and power I've ever prayed for. And I turn into a she-bear and I say, what the heck do you think you're doing? Get away from me now. I'm on the phone with the police telling them your location. I sounded just like that. He didn't know what hit him. I didn't know what hit me. He looked at me, didn't say a word, and ran off as fast as he can in, dove into the bushes. Took me about a week till I realized 
after I released all the energy from that, that I had just home run. I was at home plate. I had saved my life and possibly someone else's. And you have that power in you too. Just by taking a little time tonight to do that kind of thing, you can change your life because we are all guided to a life of love, purpose, and ultimate resilience held by the boundless love within. Now, isn't that the true romance we all long for? Yay. <laughs> <laughs>